Before the dawn's early light on a spring Saturday morning, the warriors of World War II and Korea, now in their winter years and wounded by nearly a century of life, are lining up for the trip of their lives. Go down and see Washington and the monuments and things like that, it's great. This is the most recent honor flight, the organization that was started in 2006 here in Columbus to bring veterans of World War II to the monument honoring them. We uh, uh, traveled around and sank German subs. <laughs> Seriously, that's what our office did. Oh yes, yeah, wonderful. It's really wonderful. I think it would be this big. Many of these men and women have never been in Washington, have not been on a plane since they were in the service decades ago. This is a smoother flight. Back then, the planes, after it got so high, they would bounce up and down. Most have no idea what lies ahead on this 17-hour day. Upon arrival in Baltimore, they are greeted with a water cannon salute by the fire department. Coming into the airport, they are greeted by Navy midshipmen from Annapolis. The gratification for me is to say, all that we went through during that time, it's gratification to know that it wasn't in vain. Then a civilian greeting and outside a motorcycle honor guard will lead them to Washington. Look over to your left, we will be coming by the Washington Monument. A sightseeing tour of the Capitol, then the first stop of the day is why they came. The World War II Memorial. 17,000 pieces of granite to honor what has been called the greatest generation. It's unbelievable. It means, means everything to me. Here, the memories are rekindled from a time when the world was at a crossroads. Torpedoed us right after we got the boys ashore. They got either blown up with a mortar shell or a artillery shell, and they got knocked unconscious. With their guardians, their volunteers, they can wander the grounds for an hour and a half. For most, this will be their one and only time here. Including the Korean veterans, the average age of someone on an honor flight is 89. So the majority of the World War II vets are in their 90s. We may have a few more years left, but even in the last couple months, we will call our list from the winter, the vets that have waited over the winter to go, and about a third of them have deceased. You can see their health is deteriorating. Uh, the years that I've been doing this, we, we've got more and more wheelchairs. We have more and more individuals who are on oxygen. Uh, their medical conditions are a little more grave. From here, it's on to the Korean Memorial. The Forgotten War, as it's called. Not forgotten by these men and women. In fact, on recent flights, there are more Korean War veterans than World War II. Had three high school friends that uh, never left Korea. That's such a tragic, and you never forget it, and you always relate to it. There will be other stops, such as the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and memorials for various branches. But by early evening, they are on their way back home, and soon the true magic happens. Everyone was in on this except the veterans, and they are left speechless. Their families have come to greet them and say thanks. There are hundreds here. It is one of the biggest parties of their lives to end this trip of their lives. I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, there's so many people here. This is my oh father. My what a wonderful He's girlfriend. looked forward to being able to put some closure to this service that he gave so many years ago. And I think he just got a big piece of that. I wouldn't change one thing about this day. It was just perfect. I had the best time. The best time, 70 years after their service to a nation, that in a very small way honored them on a Saturday in April. I didn't expect this kind of a welcome. I'm very pleased. And there's one more thing. The World War II Memorial was signed into law in 1993, and construction started eight years later. It wouldn't open to the public until 2004, nearly 60 years after the war. By then, most of the people who served were already gone. They went to their graves and never saw it. They may have been the greatest generation, but they were the last to be honored. Those still here are receiving accolades now, 
but could it have been done sooner? In Washington, I'm Mike Bowersock, NBC4.